Hey guys, um, welcome back to the channel. I'm down at Bancroft for the week. Uh, basically on the uh, on the edge of Chandos Lake. And the reason I've stopped here is just to kind of point something out to you guys. My main purpose of my trip this week is to look for corundum, aluminum oxide. And uh, there's a number of environments in which it can be found. And we're talking uh, in its finer forms it can be found as a sapphire or a ruby. But more typically around this area it's going to be found in, in a rougher crystal form. Uh, columnar usually, sometimes barrel shaped, sometimes spindle shaped. Uh, but the reason I'm at the end of Chandos Lake here is because this is an area that is quite significant to the finding of corundum. Uh, you're going to find rocks uh, that have been changed, for example limestones that have been changed to marble. And here I am at a road cutting, just, uh, just at the edge of Chandos Lake. Behind me we've got a, a gneiss, which is implying heat and pressure. It's uh, segregated itself out into layers. So you can see the different colors of the rock and you can see um, there's, there's some quartz just above me there. So that definitely tells you just by looking at this rock and the, the way it is that there's been some heat and pressure going on. Limestone that has been altered by heat and pressure becomes marble. Oftentimes when it becomes marble, the, the magnesium and the aluminum and other such elements, they separate out and that's how we get the crystals forming of corundum. So I mean, look at this here. This is obviously a, a, a fissure that's filled with a, a different type of material and the rock to either side of it. Uh, this is possibly one of the things that brought up the heat and pressure to this area. I mean, looking at this, you can see some relatively large crystals and uh, we've got mica, we've got quartz, um, you know, other little crystals forming. This is something where if you are a rock hound, you'd pay special attention to it because this could well be some form of a pegmatite where you're going to find your best gem crystals. A lot of times the pegmatite is striated depending on the speed with which it cooled or I should say zoned. So in the middle of the pegmatite you'll find certain kinds of minerals. At the edges of the pegmatite you'll find other kinds of minerals. So a little further along on the road, uh, road cutting uh, we got some really swirly stuff going on here. Again pressure and heat you know, it's, it's obviously an altered rock, a metamorphic rock. And then at the far end of the road cutting, we've got this stuff. Uh, basically, almost like a sandstone, it's in layers. Um, probably affected by the heat, but not so much the pressure and contortion. And, you know, we're kind of bordering on, you know, what is marble? What is gneiss? You know, the, the, the rock's all mixed up in this particular area. I mean, we're right on the edge of the Canadian Shield here, so of course the shields being mainly metamorphic rock in this area, stuff that's really been subjected to heat and pressure. Any such sedimentary rock as limestone will have been affected to some degree by that heat and pressure and so we get the marbles. And then in turn, this area is well known to cavers who know about this area for its cave systems in the marble. Beautiful, beautiful cave systems. Uh, generally lovely striated rock, um, you know, pinks and apricots and black and white and all different colors all banded together in these caves. Uh, one, actually I won't say which caves they are. So here's a real interesting spot here along the 6, 620 outside uh, Alpsley, edge of Chandos Lake. You're finding, you know, small tiny garnet crystals in amongst calcite, in one of the road cuttings. So here's a real good clear example of the marble. Lovely sort of a peachy color. Maybe it doesn't look that uh, video, but it is in real life.